What's good everyone, Enrique here with another video and this time we're talking about the Avalon Baseline and why it's the best 303 clone out right now. So let's get into it. <laughs> All right, so the Avalon Baseline, this thing is a beast. It's, like I said before, it's probably the best 303 clone that you can buy. All right, now taking a look at the back of the beast, starting from left to right, you got your power input, your power button, your main output, which is a monophonic output, your headphone output, and then you got a combination of 10 CV inputs and outputs. They range from CV input, gate input, CV output, gate output, sweep output, the filter CV input, VCA output, external input, the square wave of the oscillator out, as well as the sawtooth oscillator out. Below that, you got your cartridge slot where you would put in your alternate filters. The cool thing about the alternate filters is they actually come in a legitimate Game Boy game cartridge and you just plug them in and you're good to go. You don't have to like turn on the power off or turn it back on. You can even unplug it in the middle of it. Everything will be completely fine. For example, this is the SEM filter, the state variable one, and it even has a control on the back to change from a high pass to a low pass filter. It's kind of based on the Oberheim style filters. Moving on from there, you got your frequency response button, which is basically making it bassier, not as bassy. It's almost like a, um, kind of like a high pass filter. Then you got your USB, your filter B, which is for said cartridge slot, MIDI in, MIDI out, sub oscillator button, as well as a DIN sync in and a DIN sync out. Um, real quick, let's get this overview out of the way. I'm gonna just hit the run button. What this does is it activates the sequence. You can see the white LED right there going across. And I'm just gonna press step one, step five, step nine, and 13. Go ahead and turn this down a little bit, the tempo wise. So now that those are really bright, you can still see the dim one going across, showing you basically the playhead in your 16 step sequence. I'm gonna add another one here. And when I add this one, I can even change what pitch it is. Cool. So starting in the top left, you have of course your tune, your sub oscillator, which sounds insane right now. I'm gonna hold down pitch and turn it up an octave. Turning the sub down. You can select between your main oscillator wave shape. So right now we're on square. I can go up to off or I can go to sawtooth. The next thing with the sub on, if I turn the main off, you can switch between a square, triangle, or sawtooth as well for the sub. Another cool feature is if you hit this button in the back, it makes the sub uh, two ranges lower or two octaves below versus just the single octave below. Turning the sub down, putting our main back to a square wave. After that, we have our filter section. Of course, you got your cutoff and resonance, 303 style. And tracking, which is really cool. What the tracking does, basically higher notes um, in pitch will have the filter opened up a little more and lower notes will have the filter closed a little more. So opening the filter all the way back up. Next up you have your filter envelope section which is really fun to mess around with and what the envelope mod means is basically this signal which doesn't have an attack, it just has a sharp attack. The decay of it though you can change and change and you can see by this LED feedback exactly how it's reacting. But to make this actually do something, I'm going to turn the filter down, and the envelope mod is going to modulate the filter's cutoff. So I'm going to give myself a little resonance, and then start turning up the envelope mod. Turn tracking down. Here it's kind of plucky, right? If I start turning that down again, you can see it starts to go away. Just back to like a normal cutoff, you can say. Make it really plucky, turn the decay really far down. Or longer. The reason it doesn't sound like it's getting much longer is because these notes are so short. If I do this, go ahead and turn this one shorter again. After that you have your accent decay as well as your accent. These of course don't do anything unless you've applied the accent parameter to one of the steps. For example, step 15. If I hold down that step and hit accent, 
this is now being triggered. And you can see that the mod envelope doesn't get triggered there. So these kind of share the same um, trigger source, I guess you could say. So they almost choke each other. Turning up the decay and then turning up the accent basically makes it a little louder, like a harder hit. And you can see when I take a note off and then put it back in, it still holds whatever values were set to that step in the sequence before it. Turning accent off. Next up you have your amplifier with one control, your VCA decay. If you don't know what VCA means, it's voltage controlled amplifier. What the amplifier does is it just lets the sound out. So turning the decay up lets the sound out a little longer after it's been plucked. For example, if we have a long sustaining note, if I take this one out and sustain this one all the way here and turn this down, you can see that it, no matter how long the note is held, this is still just going to cut it short because it's not holding the amplifier open as long. Taking this back out. After that, of course, you have your tempo, which I think goes up to like 240. I'm not too sure. And then maybe down to 40. Um, those are complete wild guesses. Don't hold me to it. Up next, you got your track slash pattern bank knob. And what this is, basically, you have seven banks or seven tracks that you can save. In each bank, you have 16 patterns. In each pattern, you have two variations of the pattern that each variation can be up to 64 steps. So basically, 128 steps if you were to switch back and forth between the two. Then, of course, you have the different write and play modes and track and pattern modes that you want to uh, engage in. Me, personally, I'm always in write pattern just because it's really fun and really quick and you can do a lot of real-time recording. Up next, we've got the modulation envelope, and this is where the Avalon baseline really starts to shine. So what this does is it gives you a second modulation envelope on top of the original modulation envelope. And you only have two destinations, but trust me, they are super duper powerful. So let's start putting this to practice, and I'm going to go ahead and enter in another note. And on this step, step 11, I can hold it down and say, engage the second envelope. And right away, you can see our LED feedback showing us what the envelope is. We have an attack control and a decay control for what this shape becomes, and then also positive or negative to where it goes. So I'm going to send it to the filter. Turning down the envelope mod. Turning this up even higher. Maybe turn some tracking up. Turn the attack up. Maybe turn the decay down. You start hearing these cool rhythms that start coming out of this thing just on its own using a second modulation envelope. It's crazy. And then you start adding stuff like more envelope mod. Maybe turn the decay up on that. Turn tracking down. Another interesting thing about this is that these knobs actually kind of attenuate where these two knobs are. So the VCA depth affects this knob, the VCF depth affects this knob. But check this out. If I turn this envelope off and I have the filter at 12 o'clock and then this is off. If I start turning this down back to zero, you'll start hearing this filter open up. And then if I turn it negative, you'll hear it open up even more. So what does this mean, right? This means that as you start moving and tweaking knobs around, you start doing almost multiple things at once, really sculpting the sound and finding these really cool happy mediums within it. So I'm going to add a couple more notes. Thank you. 
And after the modulation envelope, you of course have your output with your volume knob, but we all know what that does. So when it comes to sequencing the Avalon baseline, there's a million ways to sequence the one thing you're trying to sequence, but that's also one of the reasons that makes this machine so compelling because you can start finding new ways to program your synthesizer, um, try using math, try using luck and just guessing. There's so many happy accidents that happen within this thing. And because it's a 303 clone, the original 303, the reason it was so good is because it kept you in that sweet spot. You can go so crazy with it, but it was really hard to get to a point where it, one, didn't sound usable, two, you didn't hear anything, and three, it just wasn't shredding. So with that, this allows you to kind of start moving things around so much and turning every knob as far as possible, but it always sounds so good. Same with the sequencing. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear the sequence out, right? So like I said earlier, you can have up to 64 steps when it comes to sequencing inside a pattern, as well as two variations to that pattern. But to keep things simple, I'm gonna keep it to 16 steps or less, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do the real-time recording. So first up, I'm gonna go ahead and hit run, and you'll see the sequencer starts going. And then I'm gonna hit record and you'll see that the home button starts flashing. So without starting, now anytime I press any of these notes, it'll start entering them into the sequence. So let's go ahead and just kind of slap this thing. You can see that this created a slide because I overlap notes by holding it down. I'm gonna hit home. It's a little high up an octave. I can just hold down pitch and hit down. And it'll, it'll transpose the entire uh, sequence down an octave. Another cool feature about the Avalon baseline is that it has this rotate function. So I don't know about you guys, but to me, I hear the one on 10. One, two, three, four, one, two, right? So I can just hold down function and rotate 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven spots to get it onto the one. So, so now if I hit run, it starts off with that little slide part. And once we're here, we can then start adding things or taking away things. So if I hold down step one, you'll see that there's a slide applied to it. Maybe I don't want that. Two has a slide, but that's kind of cool. Another cool thing is that you have different slide times per step. So if I just hold down the step that I want to change the slide time and then hold down the section, you can hear it's a lot faster. Or I can slow it down. I find number two is pretty much the sweet spot. Number two is the 100 milliseconds, which is basically the default 303 sound. Again, like I showed earlier, we can start adding uh, the second envelope to steps. The tracking is so powerful on this. And then on top of that, you can also just go ahead and hit record again and start adding more notes on top of this one. Bam, instantly quantizes it to the grid and you're good to go. Another cool feature about this is even though that it's perfectly quantized to the 16th step grid, you can do things like divide the clock time. You can even double tap these and get different other signatures within it. That one's cool. Go back to the normal one. And with this, even though it's quantized perfectly to the 16 step grid, if I hold down time and instead of selecting a new um, clock division, I can go and select 1 through 6 or 1 through 8 depending on which division you have set, and this is your swing amount. Oh, that is super swung. Let's try 4. Yeah, now we're talking. Start bringing in some of this sub. Let's add another accent, or the uh, second mod envelope. You can see as I turn this up, the filter starts turning down. Get these crazy rhythms. You can even change the uh, sequence length, so I can hold down maybe envelope and choose six. 
maybe 12 Turning the sub down, let's listen to the sawtooth. That's really nice. Actually, let's do this. We'll turn the main oscillator off, turn the sub up, and then turn the volume up. Now we're just an octave lower instead of having to transpose our uh, whole pattern down. Listen to that sub. Turn the resonance off. Oof. Bouncy right there. God damn. You know what? Stop this. I need to add some drums to this. All right, now we're talking. Let's get into it. I gotta slow this down before I get too carried away. Alright, just one more time. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, yeah, this thing's awesome. Uh, get one if you can. They are a little pricey. I think they're still probably about a thousand bucks. But to be completely honest, it's way better than spending whatever a 303 costs right now at the price that they are in 2018. And this is probably like one of my most used synths in my studio and definitely my most used synth when I go out and play live just because it's so quick and easy to get through a bunch of the different things. 
So if you guys did like this video, I'd really appreciate the thumbs up if you can. And if you didn't like this video, please give me a thumbs down and let me know down in the comments how I can make these videos better for you to enjoy. You can always follow me on my Instagram where I post a lot of other videos similar to this one with a bunch of other gear in my studio. And there might be something in there that you want to see a video on. So hit me up on my Instagram and let me know about it. But without further ado, you guys know the drill and that is to share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace. <laughs> this thing is crazy.